Today's video is a little bit different than our typical style video. I thought we would just have a, like a little girl chat and I could give you an update of what's going on behind the scenes for April 2020. It's all coming up next at Style at a Certain Age. Hi ladies, it's Beth. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I have a little departure from our typical video, as I mentioned in the opener, and I just wanted to give you just a big update of what's going on behind the scenes here at Styled a Certain Age. But if this is your first time visiting, a very warm welcome. Thanks so much for uh, tuning into my channel. You can find me over on Instagram and Facebook, Style at a Certain Age. We do have a blog, styleataceertainage.com. Lots of inspiration over there style tips and health and wellness and fitness and we have recipes whether it's a cocktail mains appetizers so come and join us over there but without further ado let's get going with our video Tex is like dad dad look play with me okay okay so here's my knee two weeks post-op and i had my staples out so i just have the little surgery tape on right now just to keep it in place. But you can see it's very swollen. It's, oh, there's Pax. Hi, Pax. <laughs> Pax is attacking my knee. But uh, but anyway, this is what it looks like. So um, as I said, I'm gonna share the whole journey with my knee replacement and actually the fitness journey that I will be on um, from here on out. So stay tuned. Well, that swollen knee may have been a little bit too much information for some of you, but I just really, thought that we would, as I said, take a, just a step behind the scenes and, and get up close and personal of what's been going on in my life. And many of us at this age do have hip replacements and knee replacements. It's a, it's a big surgery. It's you know something that you need to prep for and something that you really have to push yourself afterwards with. So I thought I would give you the story of how I even got here because I have to back up to when Mr. Style was diagnosed with cancer in 2018 and that summer that he was going through his radiation treatment uh, it was at, at the very tail end of that and one day i just walked out of the shower and my uh, ankle was just so swollen and i hadn't twisted it and i hadn't uh, and, you know injured it in any way I mean, it was just very baffling to me why my ankle was so swollen so i made an appointment with the orthopedist and i went in and we took x-rays and actually everything looked fine but he was a little bit concerned about the inflammation, so he sent me over to a rheumatologist who I absolutely love here in Athens, Dr. Chafin. And Mr. Style actually had gone to Mr. Chafin since we had been here. He had psoriatic arthritis. So they ran me through a battery of tests, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. You know, all the autoimmune diseases, you know, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, and luckily, or unluckily, you know, sometimes you don't know which way it is because you'd like a definitive diagnosis, but all the tests came back and I didn't have anything. But my inflammation was just off the charts in my body. And at, at that point, we had gotten the um, swelling down on my ankle, but my joints, all of my joints were, were being attacked and it was really hard for me to get out of bed. And I can just remember thinking at that time because that's, you know, when Mr. Style was, you know, battling cancer and I was like, I cannot be sick. He can't take care of me, you know, I need to take care of him. So the uh, rheumatologist put me on a you know, battery of medicine. I was on prednisone and methotrexate and, um, you know, I, and I would take ibuprofen and, and all the things that are just so damaging to your body. Um, it's like you, know, like you kind of throw a bomb in there. Of course, it does help in the short term. I mean, prednisone definitely helps you walk and you know, I could at least you know, get up out of bed and all of that. But, with that, and with Mr. Style being ill with cancer too, I really, and I was already on a fitness journey with faster weight of fat loss, I, I was really convinced that there had to be something going on with my body, um, you know, for it to turn against itself that way. And there had to be something that I could do besides just the regular medicines, because they were already talking about, you know, putting me on Embrel, which is, a, you know, a shot that you take. <clears throat> and I just really didn't want to go that route. So with a lot of research and one of the things that I discovered is when you have stress in your life and we're also, so, so take heed to this because we're going through a very stressful period with COVID-19, 
But so when there's stress in your life, that really is, it, it opens the doorway to diseases and autoimmune diseases, which are so prevalent these days. And I just came to discover that because of the stress that, that I was going through with Mr. Style and, and his cancer, that that's, you know, my, my body just opened that door and I needed to close that door and I needed to start repairing myself. And the first goal that I had was to get off the prednisone, which I did maybe about six months after I, I started it. So I got off the prednisone and the methotrexate was, was next, maybe a couple of months after that. And all the while I'm researching about food and nutrition and how food really is the best medicine for our body and to really just, you know, concentrate on, you know, so I, I eliminated all the sugars and I, you know, got the processed foods out and gluten-free and dairy-free and um, organic. And so I'm like putting those good nutrients back into my body. And so I was able, you know, step by step to, to do these things and to, you know, to really get my body healthy and strong again. And then um, about this time, then um, I lost Mr. Style. He lost his battle to cancer. And so I kind of uh, put a few things on the back burner, not, not, not my nutrition and not um, the supplements, which I'll talk about. But I needed to go back and you know see the rheumatologist, and I needed to go back and see the orthopedist and all that. And just with life just being the way that it was, I, I put that on the back burner. But I also uh, knew that my my knee, my right knee in particular, was just deteriorating at a very rapid pace. So that's really where um, my body turned against itself with the inflammation was my right knee. So it kept deteriorating and deteriorating, and I, the, really the light bulb went on. I went to visit my, uh, my son that lives in New York City, and this was about October, and we were going down the subway steps, and I had to take them one at a time, you know, really gimping down. I mean, that's, that's where I had gotten to with my right knee, and I just realized at that time, I'm like, I am so vulnerable to, I mean, my son was there, so I wasn't you know, that vulnerable, but I mean, if I'd been by myself, I would be like such an easy target. And I was like, so I was just like so determined right then. I'm like, okay, I'm doing all the right things. I've got my body repaired. I've got the, you know, um, the, the supplements in place. And so I just need to go back and see what the orthopedist has to say. So the first, I think it was like January 2nd. So I, you know, got through the holidays. So January 2nd, I went to see the orthopedist and they took x-rays again. So this is about a year, you know, a year and a half from when everything started to fall apart with my body. And so he, he took the x-rays and he just came back and he's like, he's like, well, this is, you know, this is the good news and this is the bad news. The bad news is, I mean, I was just bone on bone right then. I mean, he was really astonished at, you know, how quickly everything had deteriorated. So my knee was bone on bone we sat down and had, I mean, I just love him. He was just a great orthopedist. And he's like, listen, this is your journey. This is your story. You're going to know when you want to have a knee replacement. But once the damage is done, you really can't reverse it. And um, so I really listened to him and I, and I really, you know, and I thought about it maybe for like, you know, two, three weeks because it is kind of a big decision. Oh my gosh, you know, replacing a whole joint and so, so I made that decision. So the, um, by beginning of February, I said, I want to have that, that surgery done. And we had scheduled it. I had two conferences, no, actually I had three conferences in April and you can't travel. And, and now I know why you wouldn't want to travel uh, for a month after you've had your knee surgery for sure. So we, so we scheduled it for April 6th. And of course, uh, COVID-19 came along in March and everything started shutting down. All of the conferences that I was to attend did shut down, but I'm very, very blessed that my elective surgery went uh, ahead as planned here in Athens, Georgia. We have a very small amount of cases of COVID-19 and um, uh, so all systems were go. The, the um, medical staff, I, I had my surgery at St. Mary's. They were amazing. Um, the one thing that, that we did do is instead of staying in the hospital, you typically stay in the hospital for like two days. Uh, but I went home that day. So that was probably the only thing that maybe we changed. So, but I wanted to just touch base with you on my very rapid recovery and why I've had a very rapid recovery. And that's because I have tweaked my, 
my nutrition, I've tweaked my diet, I've, you know, I've added those supplements in, and um, so I really sailed through the, the surgery, um, you know, like that, just like a breeze. Not that it didn't um, hurt, let me tell you. When you wake up, uh, when the anesthesia wears off and, you know, all the drugs have worn off, I just remember Tuesday morning waking up and just thinking, oh, wow, what did I just do? Because it, I mean, you feel like a truck just runs over you. So, but from then on, um, I mean, I saw the physical therapist actually the day that I was in the hospital, they get you up right away from your surgery. So you have to do, and, and I had to like pass all these tests before I could go home. So I passed all the tests and, and I got home and then I've been seeing my physical therapist twice a week. So they, they just put you through the ringer. I mean, it's, I, I'm completely exhausted by the, by the time that I get home. But I did want to share with you because as I said, there's so many of us that are having hip replacements and knee replacements. So I just wanted to give, you know, just a couple of tips and tricks. And I also just wanted to, you know, just kind of open the door up to share my wellness journey from here on out from, you know, two weeks and then four weeks and six weeks because I'm, you know, determined to get back to, you know, all of the exercises that I've had to put on pause, you know, for, for many, many months. I've had a very sedentary life because of my knee and the condition that it was in. I mean, I would still hop on my Peloton bike, but you know, instead of being able, you know, to really attack that spin class, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just happy to, you know, make the rotations on the bike. And of course I had Pilates, which is honestly a lifesaver. If anybody has any joint issues at all, I highly recommend Pilates because they really can zero in on what's going on in your life and you know where you are and they really help you uh, just attack uh, the areas that you really really need to so but I was very very restricted before surgery of what I could do so now I'm so excited to get back on as I said to get back on my peloton to you know to really hit the weights again you know to do all those things but as I said, I just wanted to go through my supplements because one of the things that has helped me so much has been um, my diet and my supplements. So now I've given you a little context of what I've been battling for the last 18 months or so. And then I just really just kind of wanted to break it down because if you have, if you're curious about a knee replacement surgery, maybe that's on your agenda. Uh, maybe you have a friend that's that's going to go through that surgery. I'm just going to go through a few things so um, you'll be, you know, a little bit knowledgeable of, of what's going on. Uh, as I said, it is a big surgery, so it, and uh, knowledge is power, so we need to know as much as possible. But I do want to just go back to just well, when I was on medication for my um, my inflammation. And one of the things that I've learned is that those act, and, and listen, I am not against medicine at all. I think you need medicine. I think we need to take it when, uh, you know, when we're sick. But as soon as we can, we need to wean ourselves off because food really can come along and be the best medicine that's possible. So, and I came to understand that when, when we do have like, you know, antibiotics, it's like, you know, throwing a napalm bomb into our, you know, our micro biome which is you know our gut and that's where all the the organisms live that are you know keeping our body you know fine-tuned so i knew that i wanted to get off my medicine and as i said so i got off one by one but while i was doing that i was replacing it with really good nutritious meals and nutrients because we want to get as many nutrients as possible from our food so big leafy green salads with you know kale and broccoli and spinach and you know, just all those good things, but we need our proteins too, with salmon and tuna, and um, and I'm not a, a a vegetarian or a vegan, so I mean, I'll throw in, in an occasional steak or a hamburger, but I really just kind of alternate uh, those. And one of the things that I'm going to do, I'll be off of um, most of my medication from my surgery, so I'm going to go through a detox where I can really just kind of come in and just really kind of cleanse and purify my body and really get it set um, <clears throat> for a really you know good good recovery. But as I said, my uh, my doctors, my physical therapists, they're just so impressed and so amazed at 61 how I've just sailed through surgery and gotten to this point. So. As I mentioned, food is the most important thing in our 
nutrition and the diet that we put together. And I'll just share a couple of uh, doctors that I really um, have come to respect and I really, really like uh, the books that they have produced that's filled with knowledge. And one is Dr. Hyman, Dr. Mark Hyman, and he has a podcast called um, Food is Pharmacy, uh, Pharmacy with an F. And uh, the other one that I like is Dr. Gundry. And the other one is, um, oh gosh, he wrote, and I can't think of what his name is. He, he wrote the book, uh, Wheat Belly. So there's a lot of information out there, a lot of good information, but those are the three that I really gleaned um, the most from. And I really, I haven't gone into one camp or another. I'm not a carnivore, I'm not a vegan, I'm not keto, I'm not paleo. I really try to keep everything balanced and that's what I learned from Faster Way to Fat Loss is to really keep those macros, which is our proteins, our fats, and our carbs balanced uh, on a weekly basis. So that's really, that, that's the direction that I've come from. And I will tell you, it's really, really hard when you have a sedentary life. That's why I'm looking so forward to working out again. When you have a sedentary life, and even though you're eating all the right things, it's really hard to, you know, keep your, uh, y your muscle tone and, you know, we, we really do need the weights. We, we need cardio exercise and all of that. So I'm very excited to, you know, to put that all back into my system. So before I give any tips on uh, post-surgery, post-knee replacement surgery, I just wanted to run through all the supplements that I take. And I have been taking um, probably for the good, the 12 months or so. And the only thing that I had to stop taking before I went into surgery was my the omega-3, the fish oil. Um, and your doctor will tell you that because you go through a list of if you're on any medications. I'm not on any medications, but supplements. And they're very good about telling you what you can't take before surgery. But um, the first supplement they take is vitamin C. And that's because it's just boosts our immune system. And we all are very interested in keeping our immune system in peak condition. So vitamin C is definitely one of those. It also helps protect against cardiovascular disease and degenerate eye diseases. And it even really uh, helps your skin from wrinkling. So before I go on to a vitamin D, which is so important to us, it's the, the sunshine vitamin. I did just want to mention, so with the vitamin C, um, of course you can get it, you know, from oranges and lemons, and there's just a lot of citrus uh, that you can get it from. Even spinach is, is loaded with vitamin C, but it's typically not enough to help us. So that's why I just take one chewable tablet and it's 500 milligrams. So that's what I take of the vitamin C. But now that we're on to the vitamin D, and as I said, it's a sunshine vitamin and I'm going to refer to my notes because um, vitamin D does a lot of things. It, it uh, regulates the absorption of calcium. It facilitates our immune system. Again, it helps boost our immune system. And it's important for normal growth of your bones and your teeth. So it really helps protect us. I mean, it keeps our bones dense, which is really important. So it really does help protect us against osteoporosis. Um, and it really helps to fight disease, which is very important for us. Um, we, want, we want our body in tip-top shape so we can fight disease. And it reduces depression. And it also says it boosts weight loss. So really kind of a very, very important supplement. And I take two of these. So these are uh, 5,000 milligrams. So I take two of these a day, which is 10,000. So the next vitamin that I take is B12. And this is um, very important. So I just take one, which is 3,000 milligrams. So I take one a day. And B12 helps produce uh, healthy red cells. It supports your bone health. It also may help prevent macular degeneration, which is an eye disease that, that um, really kind of hits us when we are older. So my Nana had that, and that's something, if ever I read anything that, that can help against that, I'm definitely on board, because um, that would just really slow your life down. But anyway, so it does that. And it also slows our mental decline. So like, as far as Alzheimer and all of that, and uh, we want to be, again, you know, as we age, we want to be in tip top shape and have our minds as sharp as our bodies. So this, this helps that. And then it also improves our memory. Okay, the next one is fish oil. And I will say that this, when I was taking this, you know, before I had my knee replacement surgery, 
My joints felt so much better when I was on uh, fish oil. So it really does help with arthritis. So just keep that in mind. But this is also what they took me off of for a week or so before my surgery was um, the fish oil. And you wanna look for one that has EPA and DHA. And I take two of these a day. So th this is uh, 2,400 milligrams. So I'm getting like, what, 4,800 milligrams a day. So two big ones, and they, they are, they're, they're big horse pills. But um, what the uh, fish oil does, so it's omega-3, the fatty acids, but they're the good fats and they help support your heart health, your brain health, and supports your immune system. So very important. Okay, and the next one, magnesium. And uh, I, I uh, take this because it regulates your muscle function, including your heart and it possibly can help lower your blood pressure. And a lot of people really take this, like if they have like leg cramps at night, it really just kind of helps your leg cramps. Um, you wanna have, so this is 250 milligrams and they say optimally you wanna have like 300, 368 milligrams, which is kind of an odd number, but, uh, but anyway, so I, I just take two of these, magnesium. And then one that I don't have that I've actually been researching and that is zinc. And I've heard lots and lots of good things about zinc. I'm still kind of researching that, but I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be in my rotation too. Okay, last but not least is a probiotic and a prebiotic. Actually, it's the prebiotic first and the probiotic. And I did just briefly touch on my microbiome. And that's, I'm sure you've heard of a leaky gut or having gut health or everything starts in your gut. And that's because we have a whole community of microorganisms that are living inside of us that help regulate everything from our insulin to um, you know, protecting ourselves or they go haywire and then they you know, attack a joint like what happened to me with my knee. You have inflammation. So you wanna keep that um, community as happy as possible. And it's called a microbiome. So one of the things that's really, really good, so uh, a prebiotic, so this is by Dr. Stephen Gundry. He's one of the ones that I mentioned earlier, um, and he has several books out. So you don't necessarily have to have a prebiotic for a probiotic to work, but really what it does, it's kind of like, I just kind of liken it to a fertilizer. So it really gets the, all of the organisms just really just kind of happy and healthy. And we're just kind of, you know, just getting everything ready to come along then with your probiotics. And these two together, are just kind of like a one-two punch of just keeping, you know, your garden growing and your garden healthy. And just, as I said, all of the microorganisms that are living inside of you, they're, they're happy and healthy and they're ready to do what we need them to do, which is keep us healthy and, and our brains very, very sharp. So that's a little bit of what's been going on behind the scenes for... 18 months for a short term for, um, I mean, my life has really just been kind of turned upside down for a really, really long time, but um, I'm so thankful. I've had the surgery, I'm on the mend. As I said, my doctors and physical therapists are just like, I'm just, you know, I'm whizzing along. And so I just wanted to, to really open this up to bring you along, because I really have, um, I'm so out of shape, um, you know, for months and months of being so sedentary. and. Um, I'm so excited to, you know, to bring you back along to my workout sessions and sharing a little bit more about, you know, what I'm eating. I share the, the supplements, but just all the things that I need on a daily basis to be, you know, aging with grace and beauty and strength because that's what we all want to be doing. And um, so th thanks so much for listening to my story. Uh, of course, I want to hear your comments down below. Perhaps you're on a similar journey. Maybe you just have had um, a major surgery or maybe something traumatic has you know, happened health-wise. So please leave a comment. Um, readers love to read each other's comments and I think it just really kind of helps support the community. Uh, of course, I just wanna give you a big thank you for stopping by. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.